So, as we told you, we are going to be telling you about some very important terminologies used in the travel industry. So, we recently asked a question across our social media platforms and also in one of one Facebook group called uh, Wanderlust Diaries which is a travel group, we asked guys, what are some of the terminologists in the tourism industry that are used by guides, tour operators, and in the general industry that confuses them? And guess what? We got a whooping 1.6K comments, yes, because this means that people have been hearing things they don't understand <clears throat> and they're trying to understand what this is. So we are here today to explain that to you. So stay tuned until the end as we try and tell you what is per person sharing, what is bed only, what is half board, what is a twin room, are those two, two rooms that are identical, what is a full board, what is all inclusive, what is complementary. So Stay tuned, we'll be explaining that to you shortly. And also, if there is a word that you've been hearing in the industry that is confusing to you, comment below and let me know. We can respond to it directly and give you the meaning in a layman's language. Hello? Hi. Yes, this is Keitan Safaris. Kevin speaking, how may I help you? Okay. You are interested in our trip to the Masai Mara? Yes. The trip is only 15,000 per person for three days and two nights on full board accommodation. And I uh, will give you complimentary wine in your rooms. And if you, in case you're a single person, uh, you'll do a single uh, supplement of 15% uh, of the room rate. Yes, yeah, full board package, and also you'll have uh, game drives, you'll have uh, swimming, you'll have drinking water, you'll have shared transport. Yes, so you're two, but you don't want a double room, so you want a single room, or each one a single, or a twin room? A twin, okay, great, a twin will do. Great. Yes, if you come with your own drinks, there's a cockage fee of around 350 per bottle. Yes. We'll provide you with airport transfer at an extra cost. Yes. All right. Thank you. Let me know once you do that. So, guys, that is my typical day normally in the office. Sometimes I work from home, sometimes in the office, but all the time, that is the typical day as a tour operator. Our task is to make your work easier, but sometimes you, we give you words that you may not understand. We checked through the comment section and per person sharing was the most asked word. What is the meaning of per person sharing? So today, I'll be explaining to you in layman's language what per person sharing means and what it does not mean. So first of all, let's begin with what it does not mean. Number one, per person sharing does not mean that you're going to be sharing a bed <laughs> with someone. Yes, that is not what per person sharing means. Number two, per person sharing does not mean that the cost that you will be given, you can share the cost with someone else. No, that is not what per person sharing means. Number three, it does not mean that the cost that has been uh, quoted is shared amongst many other people. So most people think that per person sharing, for example, if a trip is 10,000 per person sharing, they say, okay, so now we are three, that means we are going to pay each uh, around uh, 2,700, or if it's 15K, each of us is going to pay 5,000 because we are three. No, that is not what it means. So now, what does per person sharing mean? It is very simple. Per person sharing, when you're given a cost, Let's say a trip to Masai Mara is 15,000. It means every individual person, that is one each person, is going to pay the quoted amount, which is 15,000. 
and the sharing bit comes in terms of services all right so you're paying 15000 you're going to the mara you're going to be most likely share sharing services or products and these services may be you will uh, share transport you may share a game drive you may share accommodation you may share a common eating area and any other services maybe if it's a there's an excursion you're going to do a boat ride you may share with other clients all right so the most confusing part comes when it's sharing a room okay in most hotels if they give you a quote or a prize per person sharing you are going to share a room yes but not necessarily a bed you get me so if you don't want to share a bed with someone you'll be asked to take a single supplement which means you'll have to top up the amount that was charged for you to get a single room so that particular service of a room will now be exclusive only to you so it's only you who will be able to spend there because you've added a single supplement okay it may be 10 percent 20 percent 15 percent of the rate quoted per person sharing so that is what it means so i'll repeat once again per person sharing simply means the price mentioned is for each individual and they are going to share services and services here are for example the the accommodation transport game drive activities uh, uh, food uh, like uh, if it's a restaurant you're all going to eat there all together so that's the first word that confuses a lot of people what is per person sharing i've got this question so many times so i hope that you have understood it if you haven't also just comment below we'll try and explain it further but it simply means the price quoted is for each individual sharing a service so something else that confuses guys a lot is the room type so you're going to book a room or you're booking a, a package and you're told you'll be given two double rooms and you're confused what is two double rooms does this mean that uh, these two rooms are going to be in multiples or what so room types it's uh, very simple also i'll start a single room is a room with one bed that can comfortably accommodate an adult simple one adult single room doesn't mean that only single people can spend in that room no it means that one adult will be accommodated in one room and one bed that is what it means in layman's language a double room it means there's going to be one big bed that can accommodate two people one big bed that can accommodate two people twin rooms like uh, this one here that is uh, showing on the on the screen this now is a twin room a twin room is simply two beds that can accommodate two adults but they are not going to share a bed unless something happens overnight <laughs> and one decided decides to cross over to the other bed but normally the beds are also not so big okay they're just a sizable bed that can comfortably accommodate one person but now <clears throat> there are two so that makes them makes that room a twin room get that then triple room it uh, means now we have three beds in this room so three adults can comfortably occupy the room so if you're three of you you will sleep each one each person in their bed simple quad that is four beds what else um there are uh, sometimes bunk beds bunk beds ni kama zile za double decker or like uh, dormitories and all that but the most commonly used is a single double twin triple you see some some rooms have interconnecting uh, doors which means a family can take up that room and it has a door that leads to another room 
where most probably kids will be spending. So an interconnecting room is a room that has another room inside. So you open a door and there's another room with a bed and other amenities inside the room. Yeah, so you can be a single uh, individual, but you can book a double room because if you want comfort or if you want uh, more space, for yourself you can still book a double room it means the price is going to be higher but if you are uh, two you can book twin a twin room or a double room if you book a twin room you'll get your room with two beds if you book a double room you'll get your room with one big bed okay so i think i'm done with the room type let me go with the on the third uh, term that confuses a lot of people cockage fee Cockage fee is uh, simply the amount that the hotel is going to charge you for bringing your own drinks or your own food, all right? You want to go to a hotel that has a policy that says drinks from outside are not allowed, okay? But you still have this uh, champagne or wine that your friend bought you or uh, at the airport or gave it to you and as a gift and you can't just uh, drink it you want to go with it to the hotel so the hotel will ask you for a cockage fee this is an amount you pay for them to allow you to consume drinks that you come with from externally to the hotel you see but this cockage fee it should it's just a very small amount let's say for example a wine bottle costs uh 1500 they may charge you 1005 uh, sorry 150 shillings so which is this around 10 percent of uh, the cost you see and when they charge you that you are allowed to ask for a glass you are allowed to ask to be served this drink you see you are allowed to ask for a waiter to come and serve you this drink because that cockage fee is going to take care of that service that you're going to get so i hope that one does not confuse you again another word is itinerary or uh, i don't want to say it uh, starting with the <laughs> i you know uh, people from the central region that might mean something else okay so itinerary or itinerary is simply a program of a, a, it's like a well documented program of how the day is going to be so we are going to meet at 9 a.m at kencom we're going to stop over at the rift valley viewpoint we are going to stop over at the old catholic church we are going to do a, an evening drive come back have dinner after dinner spend the night you know and uh, after spending the night, wake up, have breakfast, go for game drive number two, then travel back to Nairobi. That is like a short program of how the trip is going to be. So there are two types of the itineraries. There's one which is a skeleton and there's one which is detailed, okay? The skeleton one just mentioned uh, like Nairobi, Kisumu, uh, um, Busia, Kakamega, you know, like it's just very short. But a detailed one has details of where, what we'll be doing, at what time, and what activity is going to take place. Yeah, so that is what the itinerary is. You can simply call it a program, so it doesn't confuse you much. Another thing is an excursion. This is also another word that so many people have been uh, asking, what is excursion? They hear guys saying, so we have an excursion tomorrow. Wake up early, we are going to Wasini Island to spot dolphin. So this is simply an activity done for leisure. You know, if you've gone for a conference in Diani and you've done, uh, day one you have done trainings, day two you have done trainings, and then day three your boss says, today we're not going into the conference hall, we want to go out for an excursion. It simply means an, a leisure activity. Okay? So I hope that you're following up and you're learning something. So let's move on to the next one. There are also four words that confuses guys a lot. This is uh, bed only, 
full board, a half board, and a bed and breakfast. Let me start with a bed only. Bed only does not mean that the room you will get will only have a bed and nothing else. Like uh, there's no shower, there's no tap, there's no mirror. No, this means that the, the services you'll get from the hotel is only accommodation, which means spending the night in that hotel. There's no any other service you'll get apart from spending the night. So once you're done sleeping, and you wake up in the morning and you leave, that's it. That is what you have paid for. Bed only, accommodation, okay? You can go to the lounge, you can do excursions, but while you are in the hotel, you only get the bed only services. Sometimes you can get access to free Wi-Fi, which, which are uh, complimentary, which means you don't pay for them. I think I had explained that earlier. So that is what bed only means. Bed and breakfast mean you will have the chance to spend the night in the hotel and the hotel will also provide you with breakfast. So what you pay for guarantees you accommodation and breakfast. Simple. Now half board. Half board simply means that you will get dinner and one meal and also accommodation dinner one meal and accommodation or i can say accommodation and two meals let me not confuse you accommodation whereby you get a bed you get dinner and you can get either breakfast or lunch depending on what you decide if it is not half board then it is full board full board it means you'll get dinner breakfast and lunch you'll get three meals and accommodation full board three meals and accommodation half board two meals and accommodation bed and breakfast just accommodation and breakfast bed only just a bed for you for you to spend the night or just accommodation okay now all inclusive also falls in that category all inclusive means you'll get all those you'll get dinner breakfast lunch accommodation and on top of that you will get some extra drinks either soft drinks or uh, hard drinks uh, i mean alcoholics that is <laughs> you get that also and uh, you may also get snacks 4 a.m t 4 p.m t like it's like anything you ask for that is provided in the package you will get so that means you'll be staying at the hotel most of the time okay so that is all inclusive so i hope i have handled that so now let me move on to the next word that uh, confuses a lot of guys check in and check out check in is the time when you enter the hotel and you enter your room that is checking in most hotels check-in time is 10 a.m. in the morning or, uh, or uh, 12 p.m. or 12 noon and some their checkout is 10 a.m. in the morning. So that time that you check in, there is an official time for checking in in different hotels but whatever time you go to the hotel, that is the time you are checking in. You know, if the hotel check-in time is uh, 11 a.m. in the morning and you arrive at 4 p.m., so you will be checking in at 4 p.m. instead of 11 a.m. It means your room has been ready since 11 to 4 p.m. to the time you enter. Your room has just been waiting for you. you know? So guys, don't waste that room, you know. Make good use of that uh, uh, check-in time, check-in early for you to enjoy more. Yeah? Check-out time is the stipulated time when you should leave. When the hotel now says, okay, it's time for us to do a cleanup in this room, please uh, pack your stuff and then we let the housekeeping to do their work. So as we proceed, there's also a return airport transfer. This means that you're going to be picked from the airport or from the bus terminal 
out from where the the you will be dropped maybe you are flying and then you 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 alight at the airport you'll be picked from there to the hotel and back when you're flying back again home so that is what return airport transfer mean someone else asked what does uh, pax mean pax that is p a x pax simply means persons so if you're told uh, in this cottage it accommodates maximum seven packs seven packs means seven people meaning that if you are more than seven you cannot uh, get that room or you might have to add extra amount of money or uh, you may have to look for something that will accommodate the extra people okay a la carte a la carte is simply what is not provided in the buffet menu okay if it is not in the buffet and uh, you want it then that means it's going to be a la carte so it means it's a side uh, it's a side dish that you get that is not provided in the in the buffet so you ask for a waiter and you ask for an a la carte it may be in the menu or it may not be in the menu so if it's in the menu then you simply ask from the menu if it's not in the menu you can ask them to prepare for you uh, make an order okay so that is it and then something else that uh, i've seen people ask in that group is uh, let me just confirm people are asking about uh, what is a motel a motel is simply a highway hotel that is uh, that is used by people on transit so people who are traveling most of the time the journeys are very long and they're looking for a place to sleep they are most likely to spend in a motel okay yeah so i think i've handled that i don't know if i have forgotten any let me check okay yeah then we had uh, people asking about guides guides cards <laughs> i don't know if i should steal this secret to you or i should just let you find out but we have this uh these words that are used to describe animals I'm going to give you some of them. But before I give you that, do you know the difference between a cheetah and a leopard? Do you know the difference? If you know, please comment below. I want to know if you if you if you can get the difference between a cheetah and a leopard. So, also, if you know what these following words mean, just comment below. Let people let's let's have fun. Let's see what people think they are. Okay? So, we have number 1, waiguru. This is mostly used in Kenya, okay? <laughs> Comment below what do you think waiguru mean in the in the game drive field, okay? Another word is uh, shingo. We have shingo. I will tell you this. This is uh, it can be a giraffe or a certain bird. Do you know which bird that is? Comment below if you know that. Then we have maskio. What is maskio? <laughs> is it an elephant or what is it comment below if you think it's an elephant or if it's not tell us what it is and then we have uh, madoadoa there are three types of madoadoas madoadoa ya chini madoadoa ya juu and madoadoa chafu i'll tell you madoadoa chafu what it is madoadoa chafu is a uh, hyena okay so when you hear your guide say madoadoa chafu wameonekana now that means they are looking for a hyena so fisi okay so feel free to call your fisi friend madwadwa chafu <laughs> and then i'll let you comment uh, for me the two madwadwa ya juu na madwadwa ya chini and then we also have uh, uh, pembe we have pembe what is pembe and we have many other many other terminologies these ones are used mostly by guides i really didn't want to sell them out but uh, yeah if you know you know all right so those you can comment below comment below and it has been an awesome awesome time trying to explain these terms and i hope that next time uh, your tour operator tells you per person sharing double room twin room you'll be responding like yes yes i know what that mean yes So if you love this video give us a thumbs up share us out there and uh, 
Thank you for joining us. Have a good one.